What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas here. And today I'm going to be going over uh, GNUS and CIDM trade recap. Plus, I'm going to talk about how I dealt with FOMO on my CIDM trade in order to to win. Um, and you know, second of all, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. This is not investment advice, even if it may seem like it. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So on GNUS, just I thought I would kind of include some of the you know, share statistics and valuation measures. Obviously, we have 512 million uh, market cap, and we also have a high amount of shares outstanding. You know, something that I do take into account, again, it's not, uh, it's not like, you know, if it has 77 million shares outstanding, then I'm not going to trade it. Um, I really just pay attention to kind of the volume, the, the, the chart pattern, the range, and some of kind of the, the bigger picture metrics uh, in the trade rather than just saying, well, if it, if it's under a 10 million float, I can't do this. Or if it's over this amount, I think risk management is really the Holy grail. And you know, if I'm wrong on it, something like this, I can just stop out easily, but you know, it's just good to kind of include it. Uh, if you want to kind of back test and go over stuff. Um, so basically with GNUS, it was a multi-day rent runner. We had a lot of trap shorts. Uh, we had, uh, intense volume and I use the word intense because, um, we just had, we had literally 100 mil done by zombie. And I remember just saying like, you know, to, in the main chat, like, this is crazy. Like we, we are at 100 mil by zombie time. Like this is intense. We have tons of new people getting into the market. We have people on Robin hood and opening up TD Ameritrade and E-Trade and you know, just some crazy amounts of, you know, new people coming into, to the market. So with these, all these new people, it brings a whole new batch of volume and it's, it's, in, it's insane. And so intense volume can bring big swings to the upside, but it can also bring big swings to the downside as well. Because when you have a lot of people buying, if we have double the amount of people buying and double the amount of people selling, well, those moves are going to be almost doubled, right? So you have to kind of adjust in the new market. And that's what I kind of found myself, you know, in the first couple couple days, like I just wasn't adapting. Like I, I, I wasn't used to these crazy downside swings, these crazy upside swings. So now my kind of rule on it is that if you think it can't fall that low, it probably can. And if you think that it can't go up that high, it probably can. And those are two things that have kind of kept me safe. And, you know, I'm really happy that uh, I've kind of adjusted, you know, well, obviously patience is key. And that that's a, a, a big thing because there are a lot of of times where you want to FOMO in, you want to chase, but at the end of the day, those are not good habits. And you may, you may win on 10 chases, but the one chase where you lose, you know, you, you can pay the price because you can have uh, stocks that just drop a dollar, a dollar fifty, and you know, a couple like less than a minute, and then you're kind of stuck saying, "Holy crap! Like I'm down so much," and that's why I don't chase. It's better risk reward to buy into dips, and it's just it's better to be patient and wait for a dip than to say to yourself, "Oh my gosh, like I'm gonna chase this and I'm gonna make bank and it's gonna go to the moon." Like it's it's just better off for you to to be patient, to wait, you'll be 100% less emotional, and you will, like, you'll be rewarded for, for your patience, whereas if you're emotional and you just buy, you may be rewarded a couple times, but on the times where you're not rewarded, you're really screwed. Um, so this is also kind of the daily chart on it on this day. This was the, the day where it kind of uh, gapped up. Obviously, this was kind of where it finished at, but 
Um, I just thought I would kind of include, we got this kind of, it kind of started to run. I consider this like a day two or a day three, even though we kind of gapped up here. Not that many people were really paying attention to it. We didn't really have a lot of range. Uh, not many people were talking about it. Um, so, you know, it is a multi-day runner, but after we had that run from three to four, that's when people started buying. That's when people started getting involved in it. That's where people were saying, okay, uh, this is crazy. Like, GNUS, it's the next big one, it's the next big thing. So, I mean, to me, I really kind of consider this a day two move, even though it is like a multi-day runner, but, I mean, I didn't I didn't start hearing about GNUS on this day. No one seemed to be talking about GNUS here. Like, obviously, people weren't talking about GNUS here, but when we got that move from three to four, people were like, holy crap, like, GNUS, like, you know, it's the next big thing, baby. It, it was more so that I call things like a day two if it's like the second day where I've heard about it. Like when you have people posting in main chat going like, holy crap, GNUS made this big run. That's kind of like the first day or like the, the, the first day that it really started getting some attention. And then after, obviously, we got this big move. Everyone in the market knows about it. Everyone's talking about it. GNUS, hot, ch hot stock, hot chick, you know, so... It's kind of my metrics on it because I was like, oh, day two. And a lot of people are like, no, this is a multi-day runner. It's a multi-day runner. But in my opinion, it's more so like a day two play. It'll, it'll act more so like a, a day two play. This almost even acted like a day one play as well. It just really depends. I mean, that is just kind of uh, my perspective on it, I guess. Uh, this is the trades that I made on it. Again, um, I know that we're going to probably have a lot of people say like, holy crap, like this is crazy, but I just wanted to kind of go over my thought process on it. So we can see here, down here, before we get into these individual trades, we can see down here that obviously we had some insane, intense volume. It, we did. We we had uh, unbelievable amounts of volume. I th we were trading at 100 million by 1030 by zombie time, and we people were just buying this thing. Pure front side play. And this is kind of how I want to uh, describe it. So basically at the open, um, I was looking to kind of buy a dip into, into a pop and we kind of got that dip. And, um, after that, I just kind of sold into a pop like 550. like the range here is great. And I just wanted to take it off. So I sold into kind of 550. I didn't, I didn't rebuy, uh, this dip down here. Maybe I should have, but I was kind of more so like we had already had this big move. I kind of expected it to pull back more. It didn't. It kept going higher. I mean, that's okay. But again, I can't just chase up here hoping for a breakout higher, right? Usually I do not have good experiences with that. And that usually does not work for me. So again, I was kind of thinking, okay, maybe the $5 line might support. We kind of found a little bit of support down here the, the last time. So I said, okay, I'll look to buy into kind of this $5 area which it, it ended up holding, which is which is good. And it started kind of creeping up again. And I was noticing that usually when we get this slam, if we don't get this kind of higher low action and it doesn't drop lower, uh, it's a lot stronger than a lot of people think. And that's kind of exactly what we got. I just kind of sold all the way up and I just said, okay, I'm just going to look to buy dips now. And when you get into that mindset of buying the dips, like I was reluctant to even post this because this is such an outlier trade that does not happen every single day. We were just doing so much volume, so much, so many people were talking about it. It was pure front side. People were looking to short it, hoping that we we go back down to four or three or whatever. But we just had so much volume and so many people trading the stock and the float, you know, was rotated like crazy enough. We, I mean, we had like 70, 70 million shares outstanding and the float was already rotated once. Like that is insane. And I basically just kind of got in the mode of like, okay, I'm just going to look to buy dips. I mean, down here, I don't even expect something like this to happen. That's what's so crazy is that people are like, oh, how'd you know? How'd you know? Well, the, the truth is that I really don't. I mean, as much as I can sit here and say, yeah, I knew this was going to go to 7.5, I had no clue. I'm just, I'm, I'm not trying to think about too far ahead in the future. I'm just kind of trying to focus on the lines now and how I can make money down here. My mindset was like, okay, I'm just going to kind of look to buy the dips. Uh, it was kind of supporting down here as well. I kind of had a scale all the way down. Basically, I just kind of was just quickly selling into pops because at this point, it was just so crazy. We were having a battle uh, between buyers and sellers. And when we moved on to 550, 550 was holding so, so well. I wasn't looking to buy in this in this kind of range. I could have probably bought this and then tried to try 
you know, I could have probably bought the first dip, initial dip into 550, but I was just going to leave it alone because I, I was thinking that, okay, we could, this could be kind of a higher low and we could kind of pull back lower. But we had tested this 550 so many times. And when 550 should have broke down, this is something important to note. When 550 should have broken down and it didn't, and we kind of had that surprise hold, that was when I was like, okay, this stock is a lot stronger. There are still buyers. There are still people looking. Because, I mean, there's one of two scenarios that can happen. Yes, we can push all the way to 7.5. But also, if this 550 had a broken, we probably would have went down to $5. And that's why I was kind of a little reluctant to take the trade here. But I took it anyway because I was like, okay. I was just being patient. I mean, it tested 550. One, two, three, you know, four five, six times. I was sitting there just anticipating saying, okay, break down because I kind of had orders down here at this five and I was expecting kind of more so a death candle like this where I had orders down here at kind of uh, five. Um, and in this scenario, this type of stock, it's really hard to read the tape on the fly. So I'm always presetting on stocks like this. You know, some people will say, yeah, that's a, a little scary or a little, you know, whatever. But the more you trade and the more experience you get, the better the better you'll get at it i hope everyone has a great day or night wherever you're from and uh i'll see you for the next one thank you so much for watching our video if you want to see more of our videos please subscribe to our youtube channel by clicking the button here we do our best to post a new video every single day if you have any questions about mic or any general trading questions please text tosh using the number here also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here